Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in Paul and the Faithfulness of God by N.T. Wright. We're looking at a recall triad for a very unique lesson because after 1,400 pages, we're taking a look at the conversion experience on Damascus Road for Paul, and it's really a logical time for this to come up because Paul basically retreated into Arabia for prayer and fasting. Then he returned, did a little bit of a Gentile ministry. Then he went to Jerusalem. He met with uh, Simon Peter and James the Just. All this time he was reflecting back, reflecting back, and trying to make sense of the conversion experience at Damascus Road. Finally, in a letter to the churches of South Galatia, he uh, did posit a first reflective understanding. We're going to take a look at that now in a, our recall triad for pages 1405 to 1430, a reflective look back by Paul on his own self-understanding. So in block one, we look at uh, Paul's new understanding after a return of praxis. As a Jewish thinker, Paul had to revise his notions of monotheism, election, and eschatology. Now he was already living in the inaugurated apocalyptic age. His first step was to begin with a very high Christology and a rewritten Shema prayer. Paul's high Christology extended from his understanding that Jesus had been sent forth by the Father in Galatians 4, 4 through 7. So it begins with ex apostello theu, the sending forth by the by God, the, the ex apostello theu, the sending forth of God. Now in block two, Paul's high Christology next led him to a refined pneumatology. Fulfillment of Israel's promises became the now present realm of the spirit. The Abraham covenant was continuing, but through a new renewal. And this renewal of covenant included a new depth of understanding as to who were the elect, a refined monotheism through the cross and resurrection that declared Jesus as Lord, and a reshaped eschatology that included taking up the cross for one's own life. Paul's high pneumatology extended from his understanding that the love of Christ was still pressing into him, still holding him within the covenant renewal. There was an ongoing soon echo crease too. This pressing in love of Christ, which continued. So after the uh, ex apostello theu and the soon echo crease too, we move on to block three. The return of praxis and the redefined pneumatology led Paul to a reflective examination of his own conversion experience on Damascus Road. His earliest reflection appears in Galatians 1, 15, and 16, where he understands four aspects. First, aphorizo, the selecting out by the Father took place. Then kaleo, the personal call of Christ, as an awakening in his heart. Then the apocalypto, the discernment of the truth that is in Jesus as Messiah, and then the euangelizo, the commissioning to proclaim the gospel, his apostolic commissioning. So it was a fourfold new understanding of his experience on Damascus Road. In 1 Corinthians 9, 1, he described his radical turn as due to reaching a horao, clear discernment of the truth in Jesus Christ. He reached a horao, clear discernment of the truth in Jesus Christ. But kaleo dia charis for Paul, because of his past sinfulness, he could only understand his radical turn as the an, as the call according to grace. It could only be a call according to grace for Paul. Because of his past persecution of the church, he was saved by grace. He was uh, converted by grace. And then for his uh, high soteriology, extended from his understanding concerning his own radical conversion that was based solely on the faithfulness of Christ, solely on the pisteas Christu. That's key for Paul. We've learned that in many prior lessons, many prior lessons, that we have to really take up the fact that Paul posited the pisteas Christu. It's all about the faithfulness of Christ, the pisteas Christu in Galatians 
But we will take a look at our uh, four-point focus to kind of get our little snapshot here that we'd like to get. So if we look at our four-point focus, number one, years later, Paul looked back at his conversion experience and made sense of it in three profound moments of understanding. First, ex apostello theu, Galatians 4, 4 through 7, Paul's conversion began with the Father's sending forth of the Son and the Father's sending forth of the Spirit. Second, soon echo Christu, in 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15, Paul's conversion next involved the Son's call, persuasively pressing into him in a personal way, awakening him to the love that Christ offered. But I like that very descriptive term. It's a pressing into the heart that the call of Christ does to awaken Paul. And then note four, or our third point, the peace they ask Christ do, Galatians 2.16. Finally, Paul understood his conversion was based solely on the faithfulness of Christ in taking up the curse of the cross to take away the sins of the world and Paul's own past sinfulness and persecutions. Pisteas Christ too, that is the foundation of justification for Paul. Not his faith in Christ, but the faith of Christ in taking up the curse of the cross in order to reach the taking away of sins for all of humanity and the taking away of sins for Paul. So it's the ex apostello theu, the soon echo Christ too, and the pisteas Christ too. Those are the recall moments for Paul's new understanding. The sending forth of the Father, of the Son and the Spirit. The call of Christ that presses into our hearts, presses into our mind, persuasively awakens us. And then the faithfulness of Christ, the peace they ask Christ to, which is the only foundation of justification, period. It is the faithfulness of Christ that secures justification. We participate in Christ with our faith in Christ, but it's the faith of Christ for justification. It's our faith in Christ for sanctification. But justification is always faith of Christ. It's always peace they ask Christ to. Paul taught that in every letter, especially in Galatians, but in every letter. Galatians was his earliest uh, positing of the gospel as he understood it. So Galatians is where we go traditionally to look at Paul's definition of gospel. We go to Thessalonians to look at Paul's definition of eschatology and uh, parousia. And we go to Ephesians to look at Paul's understanding of doctrine. So Galatians gives us gospel. Thessalonians gives us parousia. And Ephesians gives us doctrine. All three missionary journeys gave us three very specific beginnings for Christian theology. But we have a tremendous teaching here by Paul about how he looked back later after years of reflecting back on the conversion experience on Damascus Road. Every believer does this. We all do this. We all look back later and uh, we pro kind of progressively learn. We gain depth. You know, whenever we always have the pat answer where someone says, well, how do you know that you've been saved? The quick answer is always, I know I am saved because I've put my faith in Jesus Christ. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not really the, the depth of meaning that we really would answer in a more um, private one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody because we wouldn't say that we're saved because we put our faith in Jesus Christ. We would say, it's all Christ. It's all Christ. It's not any of me for justification, it is all Christ. We would say it is pisteas Christ too. It is the faithfulness of Christ in taking up the curse of the cross. That's how I am justified, period. But we always give the quick answer, I know that I am saved because I put my faith in Jesus Christ. That's not entirely wrong, but it's not entirely precise, is it? We are justified by the faith of Christ. We are sanctified by our faith in Christ. That's what Paul taught us, and that is what we believe. We believe the scriptures that Paul gave us. We are saved. We are justified by the faith of Christ. We are sanctified by our faith in Christ. 
We have a tremendous uh, recall triad here, and it might seem odd at first, but after 1,400 pages, we look at Paul looking back at his own conversion experience. Next time, we'll pick up on page 1431.